everyone. My name is Sona Thorburn. I am the owner of Bernina World of Sewing in Raleigh, North Carolina, and this is our new location in Wilmington. Um, I wanted to take a moment to welcome you to the uh, long-awaited Jaybird uh, Block of the Month, Nebula. Uh, with Tula's amazing true colors. Uh, we are so excited to finally uh, get this program started. We've been waiting since July. I know you've been so excited. Uh, when the kids came in last week and that burst of color, um, I could not think of a better way to start 2021 um, with color, with excitement, and uh, with you guys. So thank you again for choosing Bernina World of Sewing as your Nebula headquarters. Um, and thank you, Sudi Laura, for um, starting ahead, giving us some tips and tricks, and Barbara Fortini in Wilmington. Uh, thank you also for doing it in Wilmington uh, to um, help you guys and help me as I'm going to participate as well uh, to enjoy this uh, Nebula Block of the Month. So thank you again and uh, welcome to Bernina World of Sewing. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Thank you for joining us on our month one of Nebula Block of the Month So Along. My name is Sudi Lara, and I'm here in the Raleigh location, Bernina World of Sewing, and I'm excited that you're here and that you're joining us. Okay, so let's get down to the fun part. What is in your kit? If you haven't picked up your kit yet, please make sure you do that in either the Raleigh or the Wilmington location, and make sure you check um, hours so that you don't drive unnecessarily and your location is closed. So what's gonna be in your, your first package? You are gonna have this very fun um, project bag, which I'm a little bit jealous of, I didn't get one, but that's okay. And in your project bag, you are gonna have two large booklets. The first one is Block of the month, it's gonna have some cutting instructions, guides, just getting to know your rulers and your blocks. And the second one, this one is actually your finishing directions. Put that one away. You don't need to look at that one right now. We got plenty of time, but you have it when you need it. You will also have four months worth of blocks. So Block one has already been taken apart for me, which is great. So here are fabrics all laid out for month one. Month two, three, and four come in their own little packages. They're labeled beautifully and you can use them as you're ready. And then just so that you get excited about finishing, you have your label. And again, I am really jealous of this label, just so you know. Don't lose it, put it somewhere safe. It's gonna be a while till we get to it, but we're gonna need it. So, your package will look like this. So beautiful, so fun, and you will have all of these lovely goodies in there ready for you. So I wanted to just take a couple minutes to talk about tools. My feeling about tools are buy the best that you can within your budget. This is not the place that you need to show off and be fancy just because you want to um, be fancy. Get the best that you can afford. That's always, always my go-to. In that regard, um, glass head pins, I feel like are worth their weight in gold. If you iron over them, which we all know we're going to do, they're not gonna melt on your iron. They're glass, they're gonna be fine. Well, so that worry is out of the way. Um, go ahead and invest in one box of glass head pins. They'll last you for a while. You'll have plenty for this project, even when you're piecing the very last seam. So this is my, my one thing, spend the money. Um, the next thing is your thread. So I alternate, depending on the project, if it's a garment or if it's a quilt or a bag, between Orofil, um, and actually this one that I have is 2600. It's a light gray, blends in beautifully with everything. I sewed this entire quilt with this, great. Um, if you like a white, 2024, 
either one of these great choices. What I will say is be consistent. When you start piecing this quilt, go ahead and pick your thread that you're gonna use and use it throughout. This is my personal from home, my Orifil. I have my bobbin on top with a little buddy pin. I don't know what they're called, I'm sorry on there so that if I'm if in between I'm sewing a garment or I'm working on something else I can just have this little unit next to my machine and when I go back to sewing my nebula blocks I can pull this out so thread um, yes or feels a little bit more expensive you get a ton of yardage for your money it, it's well worth it next thing is a rotary cutter and if you haven't gotten your special something from Santa yet, or a New Year's gift just to say, thank goodness we're going into 2021, the Raleigh location has one left of the Tulip Pink Rotary Cutters. Lovely, lovely. If you already have a rotary cutter, great. You don't need to buy a new one. However, change your blade. Please change your blade. Put a fresh blade in there before you get started on this project. You will thank me. I promise. It's just like a new sewing machine needle. Once you've done it, you say, why did I wait so long? There was no need for me to wait so long. This is amazing. So new blade, of course, new needle. My personal favorites are the Microtex. I usually use a 70 or an 80. Um, they're sharp. They have a beautiful point and they sew beautifully with the Orofil. So um, Schmetz, Microtex, 70 or 80. Next thing, iron. You don't need to have the most expensive iron. I know, I'm not supposed to say that, but you don't need the most expensive iron. You need an iron with a nice, sharp point on the edge. Rounded tip iron is great for lots of things, not for this project, because we are going to be pressing every seam open, every seam open. And this little point is gonna save your fingers. If you put water in your iron, which I do, I know some people don't like to, steam it up. We want some steam, we wanna press these seams nice and flat. It will behoove you in the long run. If you don't like to use water, water in your machine, best press, some kind of spray starch, whatever you have. If you happen to press your sheets or dress shirts, whatever spray starch you're using for that, you can use on this. So spray starch if you're not gonna use water. We are working with all bias edges until the very last moment. And so we wanna make sure that we're not stretching out those edges. We're being as gentle with them as possible. So um, in the making of this quilt, we're gonna use two rulers. And the first one we're gonna talk about is the hex and more. So this ruler, you can do half hexagons. You can do this lovely shape. I don't know what it is. Um, you can do your triangles and you can do a full hexagon. And you are gonna be using the half hexagon, triangle and hexagon within this quilt. And in block one, we're actually gonna be using the half hexagon and the triangle. So there have been some questions on how to use these rulers. I'm gonna preface this by saying, um, Julie of Jaybird has done a beautiful job of not only laying it out in your booklets, but also in her journey to Nebula. So if you've not watched those videos, I would encourage you to do so. Um, I'm just gonna show you a brief overview because I don't feel like we need to reinvent the wheel, but I do want you to know that we're here to support you. So I've cut um, a couple of these pieces for block one, just so you know, I'm making this whole quilt all over again so that I can show you each block as we do them, because this is going off to the spa today to get her quilting treatment. So in your instructions, it's gonna tell you how many strips you need to cut, whether that be a two and a half inch strip, a three and a half inch strip, a four and a half inch strip. It's gonna go ahead and tell you how many strips to cut. And from those strips, you're gonna end up cutting your, your pieces. So this is actually the half hexagon that, you'll be using in block one, and this is actually one of your fabrics. For this piece, I, I cut my edge, just like Jaber talks about in her videos. And there is a half hexagon on this ruler. However, you also can use the triangle that's here. I have my bottom edge lined up with the four and a half inch line here. 
and it should line up right at the top of your strip. So you're gonna already have that line cut. You're just gonna go ahead and cut this one. I do like to do mine two at a time, just for time's sake. Anybody that's taken a class with me knows that I'm a fairly lazy sewer. So I like to get my bang for my buck and go ahead and get those done two at a time. One of the biggest questions that's come up is, can you use other rulers? Yes, you can. Like I said before, I want you to use the best tools within your budget. So if you're only gonna buy one ruler, I would suggest that you buy the Super Sidekick. If you have a 60 degree triangle ruler, you're gonna be fine. The only thing you won't be able to cut out is your full hexagon, which you will be using during this first round of blocks, but there's a template in your booklet. You can trace it, it will be fine. If you already have the Hexamore, please use it. But if you're trying to figure out within your budget which rulers you should buy, if you can only buy one, I'm gonna go with the Super Sidekick. But we have our Hexamore. It, would, it will help you cut out all three of your, all two of your blocks that you need for block one and all three of the blocks that you'll need throughout the quilt. Okay, so our second ruler is the Super Sidekick. And as I just said, if you're only gonna buy one ruler, buy this one. You are gonna need all three of the shapes from this ruler in this in this quilt. So you have your um, half rectangles, your triangles, and your diamonds. So all three of these you can cut with this ruler you will need in this quilt. And you cannot um, cut two of these with your hexamore. So, you also can cut your triangles with this ruler as well as the hexamore. So just know that. So I have got, neither of these fabrics are in these blocks, but this is what I had in my stash so I, I wanted to show you. So I have um, my strip cut. I have one edge sliced already and I can come in with the super side kick and I have, let me turn it around so you can see. I have this edge lined up with my triangle line. The top edge is lined up at two and a half inches and I'm just going to slice this edge right here. And once I'm done with that, I can turn this over and continue cutting. So this is this is a flip ruler and, and Jaybird has, Julie has shown this beautifully in all of her um, Journey to Nebula and also in your instruction booklet. So don't, don't forget you have lots of tools um, at hand. So I'm hoping in this first video to also show you a few tricks that I've come up with keeping myself organized because this is a lot of fabric, a lot of blocks, a lot of little bitty pieces, and I want to make sure that you feel like you're as organized as possible. So I actually feel like cutting of any project, whether it be a quilt, a bag, a garment, is always like a whole session unto itself. So I'm not gonna cut out a garment and then go sew it. I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna put it into a project bag, and I'm gonna come back to it. So when I have 15 minutes to sew, or maybe even 10 minutes to sew, it's already cut out and I can do a few steps. I feel the same way about a quilt. I always cut my quilts out, put them in a project bag and get back to them when I can. I've done the same thing here. And these are my project bags slash Ziploc that I am using for the first four months. Like I said, I'm doing this quilt all over again. So I got myself organized um, before I came to visit you all today and wanted you to see how I do things. So I have my instructions for the month as well as all of my cut pieces inside. Some of my fabrics are gonna look di different than yours. Don't freak out. I'm doing what I can out of my scraps. So for month one, I have my triangles, not the fabric you're using. You all will be using this hexagon fabric right here. And then I have my three solids. Excuse the curled edges. They've been living in this baggie. And I've done the same thing with our second block. Again, these are not all the same fabrics. Don't worry, you have the correct ones. So I have all of that 
ready to go so that when I have my spare 15 minutes, maybe before dinner or while dinner's cooking, or even first thing in the morning while everybody else is asleep, I can jump in and do a little bit of sewing. So I've done the same thing for month two, month three, and month four. And they all live in a little bucket, my nebula bucket with my rulers, etc. Alrighty, let's look at the blocks that we're gonna be working at on for this first section. So we have blocks one through four. Next shipment, you will get blocks five, six, seven, and eight. Just so you can plan ahead, you're gonna be getting four blocks at a time. So month one, we have the blue version, and down here we have the orangey coral version. Month two, we have this beautiful orangey dream sickle, and this, as Tula likes to call it, more blurple block. Month three, we're going to be working on this lovely one. I love a stripe and a polka dot, so this is like my whole world right there. Makes me happy. And it's mate over here and again in that sort of dream sickly orange color. And finally, for month four, we have this beautiful block um, that does have our full hexagons in it. So here are your full hexagons that you'll be cutting out. And its mate is right down here in this amazing kind of raspberry e feeling. Um, and it's got this beautiful wildflower, which I'm sort of in love with that fabric. So those are, those are our blocks, live and in person, just for you to see. Once this sweet lady comes back from the quilting spa, she will be hanging up here in the Raleigh location. Barb is your Nebula cheerleader in the Wilmington location, and one will be hanging up in that location as well shortly. My favorite part of these videos is going to be questions and answers. So thank you for those of you who emailed in questions. Also, if you're on Facebook, and I know some people aren't, but if you are, feel free to throw a question out there. There's nothing like the hive mind. And if I don't get on there fast enough to answer it, or somebody from one of the Bernina World locations doesn't get on there sooner, I bet you that there is a quilting friend out there who is gonna jump in and answer your question or at least give you a helpful hint. So remember that you have those resources, again, using our tools. So the first question that's come up is, do I have to decide what size quilt that I am gonna make now? You do not have to decide. You actually don't really have to decide till July when we start doing our finishing in our background. So all of this loveliness, it's amazing, it really is, and it's beautiful in person. You don't have to decide until the very last um, set. You're gonna have enough fabric to make the queen size quilt. If you get through all your blocks and you decide, there's no way I want a queen size quilt, I just want to, finish this out. The lap is beautiful. And that is actually what I'm going to be making as my second version. So don't have to decide now. Move that aside along with those finishing instructions booklet and just get excited about your blocks. Um, one of the other questions that people have had are what if I run out of fabric? What if I make a miscut? The Raleigh location has all the fabrics that you will need ask me how I know because I've had to come and get some. So all the fabric is here. If you just need a little piece, come get yourself a quarter yard. You might decide to make a second one as well and then you'll have extra. So just, just know we've got your rack, we got you covered. And if for some reason that fabric is out for any reason, just pop a note on Facebook and I guarantee that some quilting angel will pop it in the mail for you, okay? If you did not do the journey to Nebula um, with Jaybird, it's totally fine. You can still make this quilt. That was not a prerequisite. Um, it was just a lovely option for people who've never used any of Jaybird's rulers or made any of her quilts to be able to get excited and get started and, and maybe get some of that nervousness out of their system before they jump into a big project. So it's no problem if you didn't watch it, don't worry, we've got you covered. Another question came out that wanted to know if we're gonna have the pillow, which is the extra project 
in the back of your um, instruction booklet that uses all scraps. Are we going to have kids for those? We're not going to have kids at this point. I think I haven't made the the pillow yet, but I will work on that this month so that I can answer definitively. I think you're going to have enough fabric from your kits that you can make this pillow. If we find out that you need some background or some accent, my guess is that Sona will make sure that both the Wilmington and the Raleigh location have some kits available for that. So again, you need to finish the whole all your blocks before you even get to that pillow. So we're gonna put that aside. That's gonna be our fun and fantastic end of, end of the journey. Another great question. What is the refund policy can you cancel? Please call your home store or send an email if you have a question about that. My gut feeling is that the answer is no. Once you've committed, you've purchased your kits already, and so there you will not get your refund back. If you are watching this video and you had not thought about making this quilt and you would like to, I think there are a couple of slots available. So give a call to your home location and see what they have available. Someone has asked if we're gonna be sewing along, if we could do a Zoom sew along. I am here as your cheerleader in the Raleigh location. Barb is your cheer head cheerleader in Wilmington and I will do whatever seems the best for you all. So if there's more than one person who would love to sew along with me, each month, let's make it happen. We'll do it, no problem. Send an email to your home location, drop a note on Facebook so we can see what kind of interest there is and we will set up a time. It, no matter how we do it, if it's Zoom or if it's Facebook Live, we'll make sure that we record it so that those of you who may not be able to jump on at that same time can look at it later. We're not leaving anybody out. Everybody's going along for the same ride and I'm excited to do it with you. Make sure that you stay tuned on the Facebook group. And if you're not on Facebook, no problem. We'll make sure an email goes out as well for um, the date and time of our next video launch, when we might be sewing along together, when the next shipment date will, and any of those sort of nitty gritty um, questions and answers. We're hoping to make sure that those are available on Facebook and for anybody who needs it so that it's a, your resource is right there using our tools. It has been wonderful to hang out with you for this short amount of time today and I look forward to seeing you all and chatting with you online and possibly in person at some point this year in the new year as we sew this amazing quilt together. Any questions, any concerns, you get nervous, you think you made a miscut, just just throw out that question. I will be checking Facebook multiple times a day, as will all of your cheerleaders here in the Raleigh location, as well as the Wilmington location. We want for you to not only have fun, but to feel successful. I know for some of you, this is gonna be your first bedside quilt. I'm so excited for you and you are gonna feel so amazing once it's done, I promise. So until next time, see you soon, sewing friends.